So uh, is maybe we can proceed with the next talk, Rafael Salazar. Rafael Salazar is right here, so he's gonna be presenting uh, the paper to us. Formative architecture configuration model for performing dynamic dynamic pervasive service composition. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rafael Salazar, and I'm going to present the job titled Cognitive Architecture Configuration Model for Performing Dynamic Service Composition. Um, Okay, this is the outline of the presentation. We will start with a brief introduction on which I will I would like to talk a little bit about pervasive systems. Uh, thanks to some advancements in technologies so, such as uh, wireless network, network technologies or battery technologies, we are now able to embed devices on today's environments in order to provide computing capabilities. Those advancements also make such devices, such such devices, capable of cooperation and coordination among themselves, which is the basis for for creating pervasive systems. But these advancements also come with a share of challenges, some of which are like device availability, since we don't have any guarantee that devices are going to be present during the entire lifespan of the pervasive system. They might go absent, they might move away. Also, problem like device selection, we have to we have to create techniques to select the most fitting devices for, um, for a specific task. The communication among devices, since they are mostly connecting through wireless connections, they are not very reliable most of the time. Also, resilience systems, there the system won't be able to to adapt to failure since there might be devices going in and out of the system, there might be communication troubles. Also in energy management, since most devices won't be connected to any, to, will be connected to a limited source of energy like batteries, among other kind of challenges. This leads us, this left us to ask ourselves, can brain inspired cognitive architectures because be a solution to that kind of to that kind of challenges. Currently, there is no general solution, general solutions to this kind of problems stated before. But we do know of a system that is somewhat good at managing uh, resources, both external and internal, in in the tasks they are they are in the tasks they are controlling, and that system is the human brain. So, thanks to this, we we believe. That a beacon can be employed to deal with with the serve with controlling the devices in a pervasive system and engaging in pervasive service composition in on top of on top of the system. So before going to service composition, we have to we have to define what is a service. In computing, we know we define a service to an abstraction of a capability offered by a device. For example, a smartphone's camera can be abstracted as a, as a service, as can, for example, geolocal geolocation or time serv or time services in a, in a device. There's a subset of services called pervasive, pervasive services that are, that are those capable of executing 
at any time or any place and with minimal user intervention since they are embedded in the environment. But also this limit, this same environment limits those, those services. So the services must be, must be aware of their surroundings at any time. And regardless of the, of the type of service, there might be user requests that are just too complex to be solved by a singular service. In that case, it will be desirable to, to be able to combine the functionalities of different services into one single composite service. The process of combining many services, we combine the functionalities of many services into one single service is now on service composition, which is a problem we are trying to attack. The service composition field has, has been going for many years. So many, many approaches have been used for service composition among them machine learning, game theory, self organization, genetic algorithms, among, other, among others. However, a uh, few, few of those approaches consider key issues such as, for example, the, the ability to adapt to a change of goals mid composition, the, the capability to gain experience from past compositions to use on, on future, future compositions, or the, the need to, to have the services from the start to the to, from start to finish of the entire composition process, which might affect energy efficiency. We found only one work on all our literature review, which employs a big approach, but uh, it has issues with potential memory bottlenecks since the, there is no attentional filtering among between the perception models, perception functions, and memory, so it could so it could saturate. There's also the requirement that it requires static devices such as desktop computers or servers to perform compositions, which might be unfeasible on some pervasive systems. And also it limits the service selection during the in the composition since it has bias towards uh, the users on devices, which may, may limit uh, solutions, as well as it has the same uses, issues that non-big approaches which we consider uh, somewhat a waste. With this in mind, we, we propose uh, to employ a, a BICA, and the quiet local BICA, which is developed by a group at Simvestab. And some assumptions and hypotheses of, the, of this proposal is that the, the quiet local BICA models are based on neuroscientific evidence. It's also, it's also able to compute the context to create a picture of the system's current state. It has a composition solution stored in memory to employ as experience for, for, for and it can also evaluate a plan's execution evaluate by step by step. And there is a step of the plan. And the hypothesis we have that a, composi a composition retrieved from experience will be faster and more reliable than starting a, com a composition from scratch. And then the, the Vika can provide a composition, a composition of adaptability and resiliency to change of goals and resources during the composition process. The composition process is basically as follows. Those are the, the biological Vika uh, models. And the first step is uh, that the sensory models, both internal and external, receive the inputs from the, from the environment. They transmit it to the perception model where they are interpreted. And once they are interpreted, they are, they are transmitted to both the memory models for storage and the motivation models to compute the, the current goal of the, of the system. With both computed, it proceeds to transmitting to the decision-making model in order to, to query the, the, the planning model for past plans to solve that, that goal. Then the decision-making model decides among them to choose one, and then the planning model starts executing the plan with the monitoring model executing every step of the plan. For every step, the planning model transmits to the alert model, which 
which modules are needed for that specific step. step. And then the alert module either uh, uh, inhibits or stimulates the, the cognitive modules according to the needs of every step. The, the set of, of needed modules and their connections are happening, we call them a cognitive configuration. For this, we choose a particular case study about predatory crime detection. What is, where is a predatory crime? A predatory crime is a crime where the, that is deliberate and that takes advantage and take the, the victim's property the same way of uh, how a predator will take advantage of a prey. There have been instances of, of deployment of drones which help to deter criminals from committing crimes or help them or help police authorities to capture them. One of this, one of this has been actually here in Mexico, which we, which we used to do. From this, we deliver additional assumptions. The first being that the environment is embedded with devices controlled by the Coyote Beacon. And the second, that there are devices near every possible crime scene, so there are no blind spots or reachable places. We assume we from this we have that the system works in three phases, where the first phase is monitoring. In this phase, the system, as the name says, monitors the environment in search of ongoing or potential crimes. For this, it uses uh, devices such as cameras, whose input will enter to the uh, external sensory and then be interpreted in perception with the help of, of inputs from motivation. The input will be stored in, in memories, and we will check for associations to see if it, if it matches with past, with past uh, scenarios of crimes or suspicious behavior. This information is transferred to the to decision-making model to see if, if, if it's necessary to change phase or maintain monitoring, which might alter the plans. In case we need we maintain the monitoring phase, then we, we require the orientation model to guide the but the orientation model to guide the, the sensory devices and the motor model in case we need uh, to do some movements, for example moving cameras around. And this results in, in motor outputs. In case it detects uh, a suspicious behavior, for us, suspicious behavior could be, for example, a person being following close, being seen, being followed close by another person, then we go to the third phase. In the third phase, the system has to send a drone to the, to the place of interest since we assume that the sole presence of the drone will deter the criminal. Here, we have to look, visually locate the, the place of interest. Once we, we locate it, we, will, we also maintain, uh, we will have to look in case the crime is committed before we can reach the place, and that will non-declarative memory helps. The information is sent to the decision-making model to decide if we maintain deterrence or change to the next phase. In case we, we are still in the deterrence phase, we have to, to orient the drone towards the, toward the goal, which will need the help of the orientation and motor models to maintain a correct orientation towards, towards the place. In case uh, the use, the deployment of a firearm is detected, uh, either in monitoring or veteran space, we switch to alarm phase, in which the goal is no longer trying to deter, but to alert nearby authorities about the crime. In this case, the system can visually locate any device that it can employ to draw attention towards the scene with the help of, of cameras. We have to to make we have to look for association to see what kind of devices we can employ for that for that task. Then decision making we have to to decide which one to employ. Then we we query for plans, and the plan is executed by the motor model by activating the device. This is the mainly the the three cases of of, of function of the system. 
And during the development, we are on with some issues with that we have for discussion. The first one being superhuman capabilities. We know that we humans are limited, sensorially limited, but some of those boundaries are not present in performance systems. For example, there can be infrared cameras present in the environment, and we know that we as humans cannot see infrared vision. So one question is, how can we modify a beacon to behave correctly under such situations to perform correctly having such inputs that we normally cannot, cannot add up on? The second one is context. Since in real life, many situations can be misrepresented of its context. For example, if we see two children playing with, with toy guns in the street, we may be able to, to deduce that they are playing war person. But can Abika do the same? Can Abika reach the same conclusion? We don't know. And it's something we have to work for, for doing this kind of systems in this situation. Also, context is very important for privacy systems since the, any change in the environment, it can be critical for its for it function. Also, more granularity since we load, uh, in this work, we load stimulate or inhibit uh, as mode whole, but not individual mode. For example, we load the entire motor mode, but we only employ, let's call it voluntary movement. But we know there's reflex movement and routine movement, etc. And still, we load the entire mode whole. So there's room to improve regarding that. And last but not least, ethical reasoning. Because we assume that there is just one situation happening at a time, at any moment, for the for the for the study case sake. But that's not the case most of the time in real life. So if we have many situations happening at the same time, and I can only attend one or a couple, how can the system decide which ones are more important to attend? If the system is a critical system where the, where the safety or even the life store of its users are at stake, that's not a life decision. And this goes beyond just resource management and goes fall into ethical reasoning. And, it's, and we are not sure that's something that is ready to undertake. So for now, uh, as a conclusion, we see that humans learn how to perform complex recovery tasks during, the, during their lives. And this is the inspiration from us to propose this, this, this system, this approach that is using Navica to carry pervasive service composition. And we believe that despite these limitations, uh, such approach is, promise, is promising to tackle this kind of open flow, open problems in, this, in the field of service composition. Uh, that will end my participation. Thank you for your time and all questions and comments are welcome. Thank you. Questions? Yes, please. Our guest of honor. Well, well, oh, so, okay. Um, it, it, uh, quite interesting uh, work. I think it's uh, really full of possibilities. I, I was wondering here, uh, in, in, in a situation that you have, for example, uh, different environments, each of them monitored by a camera, okay? You can uh, think of uh, cognitive architecture, for example, for uh, identifying people moving around, okay? And for example, using the, the clothes of, of, of the, the person, you can give a tag of identity to each of them. So I can call this is person A, this is person B, this is person C, okay? But when uh, this person moves to a second environment and a second camera is, is making the, the recognition of, of who else is, is passing through, how can you uh, make the conciliation that, okay, person A, in, in, in one of the environments is equivalent to person D in the other environment, because you can have, for example, different uh, color calibration for, for the cameras, and then uh, there must be a problem in, in, in knowing that the same person 
that appeared in one of the environments is the same one on, on, on the second environment. So how, how can you think about making this, this conciliation such that you can actually track uh, wherever this person is, is moving around from, from different environments? Uh, on the I will, we were considering uh, the part of when transiting from one from one part of the scenario to, to another, uh, but the part of will be um, help with, it. for example, the memory. In memory, we have stored uh, different episodes, different scenarios, different uh, parts of, let's call it, well, scenarios when we show uh, a person as part, of, as part of it and then maybe transitions or movements. And I think it can be expanded to show not only as part, let's say, of, of one field of vision, but multiple fields of vision. Uh, use the scenarios as, as a construct of the entire environment, and that will help us. Then. In case, uh, let's say, uh, that person moves from the, the field of view from of camera, of camera A to camera B, that scenario construction will help us to, to track the, the transition, the movements of the same person. But that will be, I, we were considering that in case of, let's say, normal, uh, normal camera report. If there's a variation, for example, in, in that, those to have coloring, for example, that would be a little bit tricky because it will require not only to, to track the, the movement, but to, to make a recognition, an association that despite the changes of, of color, for example, it is the same person. Like, I'm not quite sure how to call that different movement, but I, I am I am sure that the scenario played in, in memory it's 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 a big part of how we will track different different so different points of view in the same scenario because that's how we normally build it in, in our brains not necessarily because we can say multiple fields of view in at the same time but because we transit the, the different parts of the scenario in, in a in periods of time and that help building scenarios. And I think that's part of the solution for this kind, this kind of things. Is there any other question in the audience or in the Zoom room? No? Well, we're gonna proceed with the next uh, talk. <laughs>